Hello friends, welcome to Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts. Yet another video in which I am going to take up some basic simplification problems in which the use of laws of exponents and of course the square roots, the decimals, the baud mass, everything will be there. These are the questions which you just can't escape in the quant exams and if you are a school student, you must concentrate on these type of questions so that you are not only comfortable with your school exams, but you are trying to develop those competencies which will help you in cracking the higher competitive exams when you grow up. So these, you know, videos which I am bringing out on the channel is for the uh, purpose of excelling yourself in terms of your calculation speed. And that is why we require a lot and lot of these short tricks. You know, when I talk about short tricks, students are like, you know, sir, it's very, you know, interesting when you watch short tricks, but it's very difficult when you apply short tricks. And that's why I decided to bring up all these simplification problems videos where I can tell you that applying the short tricks is also a reality. We can actually do it and we can actually do it very, very smartly. So let's see friends, what do we have in this video? Before that, let me tell you about the ebook of short tricks. We have already brought out the ebook of short tricks and now is the time, you know, you are you're having the summer vacations and, uh, you know, a lot of government exams also coming up so that you can excel and calculate 10 times faster and, you know, over 350 short tricks, 24 different topics of quant, whatever topic you think that is there in this ebook, 300 degree type pages, video support directly, fully solved. You know, lots and lots of things we have created a wonder for you. And this is the best seller right now in the market in terms of the short tricks ebooks. What now you're getting a reasoning course also along with this ebook of short tricks now. So how do you get a copy of this? You need to be willing to uh, spend a little bit on your education and send me a message on 9896-369963. My WhatsApp number 9896-369963. So send me a message now if you're willing to develop 10 times faster speed of calculations and be among those 1% students who actually can do it smartly. Let's see friends, what is the first question we are taking up? So here we have the first question where a lot of exponents are there and you need to be really, really smart if you have to solve this question. So here you have 3 raised to power something. So on the left hand side, you should have everything converted to 3 raised to power only. See, we can only find a variable in the exponent when you have the same basis on the left hand side, left hand side and the right hand side. That is the first important thing you should understand. And therefore, apart from three as the base, whatever you have will have to vanish. So what apart from that we have here, we have powers of two also. So let's convert all these like 27, 32, 9, 81, 6, 2, 43. They are not prime numbers. So we can actually resolve them into factors. Only this 2, base 2 is a prime number. Rest all are composite numbers. So I'll break all those in terms of its prime factors first so that we have a simplified version of the problem. Let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do is to resolve this 27. 27 is 3 cube, right? And we have a power 9 here times 32 is 2 raised to power 5 and we have a power 5 also here. So this is done. 9 is 3 square. What is the power? 27. So we have resolved this also. Now 81. 81 if you know is 9 square or 3 raised to power 4. And then we have a power 5 here. So I will write the power 5 also in the denominator. We have 2 raised to power 20, which I can't do anything there because it is prime. 6 raised to power 5 is 2 raised to power 5 times 3 raised to power 5. That is 6 raised to power 5 and 243. 81 times 3 is 243. I wrote 3 raised to power 4 here. So I'll write 3 raised to power 5 here and power 5. Now this is the first step. You have to be very quick in resolving everything to a prime base. A prime base. That is important equals 3 raised to power something. So we have to find that something. Now what happens here is, let's first take the terms which don't have the base 3. Here you have 
2 raised to power 5 times 5 which is 25. Here you have 2 raised to power 20 and 2 raised to power 5 which multiply together to give 2 raised to power 25. So this factor is actually getting cancelled by these two factors and that was bound to happen because 3 is the base here. So you can't have any term containing any other base except 3. Otherwise you can't find x. Right? Now we have all the bases as 3 and here also we have 3. So let's apply the laws. 3 raised to power what? 9 3 times is 27 plus 27 2 times is 54 plus 5 4 times is 20 minus 5 and minus 5 5 are 25 equals 3 raised to power x. So I have reduced it to a common base. Now 3 raised to power how do we do it? 27 minus 25 is 2, 2, 22, 22 minus 5 is 17, 17 plus 54 is uh, 71 and is equal to 3 raised to power x. So the value of x comes out to be 71 because the base is same. So we can have the value of x equated and x comes out to be 71 and here is your answer. E71. Friends, not difficult, but it looks difficult, it looks scary, if especially when you are not aware of the laws of exponents. Let's see another one. Here we have a question in which there is there are a lot of operations, percentages, square roots, decimals, even board mass applies here. Eighth root, that's scary, right? So how do you simplify this problem? See, 50% is pretty obvious. You should know 50% of any number is half of that number. And you should know square root of 1.69. 169 is a perfect square. That is 13 square. So, when you put a decimal two digits from the right hand side, this is actually half, that is 50% of 1.3. So, 13 square is 169. So, 1.3 square is one point. 6, 9. So this is the first part plus. Now I should know what is 16.66% of something. Now if you know 16.66% how to convert that into what? A fraction. Then it works. If you don't know that it is difficult. You know 16.67 times 3 is approximately 50 and 16.67 times 6 obviously is 100. So this is 1 sixth. 1 sixth. And that's where we need to be smart. If you write 1 sixth in place of this of 9 to 1 sixth. Now square root of 9 to 1 sixth. 16 means ending in 4 or ending in 6. 92. Below 92 you have the perfect square what? 9 right? 9 square 81. So 94 or 96, either of the two is the answer. In between them, we have 95, whose square is 9 tens are 90 and 25. My number 9216 is greater, so the square root is 96. So this is 96. Minus something equals. Now look at this. When you have 8th root, so 256 raised to power 4, this is inside the 8th root, and 8th root means 1 8th, the power 1 8th and therefore this is practically 1 half, the power is 1 half. If you know 256 is the square of 16, so 16 square power 1 half is actually 16 and therefore the right hand side is nothing but 16. Now this is what is smartness all about. If you can do all these operations which I have done in a single step mentally in 15 seconds then you can solve this in the next 10 seconds time and solving this type of question in 30 seconds you know only one percent of the students can actually do it so friends watch what happens next half of 1.3 so this is practically half of 13 by 10 right so you can write it as 13 by 20 plus 1 sixth of 96 this is, I think, uh, you, you'll see that this gets cancelled exactly 16 times. So you have a 16 here. 
and minus 16 because this comes here and equal to x goes there. Why you got 16? Because that was getting cancelled and your answer is x equals 13 upon 20 which if you do 5 times you get 65 upon 100 which is 0 0.65. See everywhere smartness works. 13 upon 20 don't divide 13 by 20. Convert that to a base 100 so that you have a number to be divided by 100 not by 20. So 0 0.65 or C is the answer for this particular question.